The fitness industry commonly claims you only need compound exercises for app growth. The truth is, they're wrong, and here's why. Welcome back, Dr. Michael Wolf here, PhD in muscle hypertrophy, back today with a video about the abs. First of all, what are the abs even? Commonly referred to as abs or core or midsection, here's what they really are. The abs or the core is composed of a variety of muscle groups. Technically, even the lower back muscles, the erector spinae, are involved in the core, right? But the muscle group people usually refer to when they talk about their abs or their core is really their six-pack muscle, right? While there are other muscle groups like the internal and external obliques, like the transverse abdominis, like the lower back muscles, the erector spinae, the main muscle group people really care about aesthetically is the rectus abdominis. If you look at this muscle on an anatomy chart, what you'll see is that this exactly looks like the six-pack muscle that a lot of people are after. Interestingly, because there's a variety of muscles, they actually all have a variety of functions, right? Some of the more internal muscles, like the transverse abdominis, have the function of controlling your diaphragm and stabilizing your spine a little bit. The same can be said for the erector spinae. However, when it comes to the appearance of the abs, the main muscle group involved is the rectus abdominis, and potentially, depending on your priorities, the obliques. But the rectus abdominis' primary function is spinal flexion. Exactly what you're told you need to avoid during deadlifts is actually what your abs allow you to do, flex your spine. So you might have heard that compound exercises like the squat, the bench, the deadlift, the pull-up, the overhead press are all you really need for abdominal growth and to get a six-pack. The truth is, they're simply wrong. Think about the squat or the deadlift. In these movements, the bar is actually trying to force you into spinal flexion. In order to resist this, as you've been told multiple times in your fitness career, back flexion is bad, keep your back straight. In order to prevent this flexion, your lower back muscles are actually active, which is the opposite of your six-pack muscle. If your six-pack muscle were to contract, it would actually force you to round your back and flex your spine. And that's exactly what you're trying to prevent. And so your rectus abdominis simply isn't being worked very hard during the squat or the deadlift or even the bench. Now, you could argue that as with many muscles in the core, the rectus abdominis could be involved in some stabilization right, of the spine, and that might cause some growth, but that is reasonably unlikely. The one slight exception in terms of compound movements for the abs is the overhead press. In the overhead press, your natural inclination will be to overextend your spine, and your abs will actually have to work in order to keep your spine a little bit more neutral. So I've just denounced a lot of fitness influencers and the claim that compound movements are all you need for ab hypertrophy. Let me give you a caveat. There is no direct data on ab growth stemming from different movements. So while I'm saying there's a very strong rationale here for why we shouldn't expect compound movements to really grow your abs, it could be the case that actually you do see some ab growth. The truth is we just don't know. Personally, I don't think it's likely and here's why I think you need to incorporate some ab isolation exercises in your program if you want to grow your abs. As a quick aside, people often rely on EMG data or electromyography data in order to inform what ab exercises are better for certain portions of the abs or what they should do. The truth is, the validity of EMG as a means to select exercises or say one exercise is better than the other or one exercise targets this area of that muscle has been called into question multiple times, both in actual studies, in review papers, and so I really wouldn't base your ab exercise selection off of EMG studies, showing greater activation of a certain part of the abs in one exercise versus the other. However, when deciding on which ab exercises to perform, general principles of exercise selection still do apply. For example, in any exercise you pick, we want to make sure that your abs are actually the limiting factor. So when you stop a set, when you can't do another rep, it should be your abs that have reached failure, that simply can't produce enough force anymore to complete another rep. A few more principles. One, we want to be training the abs in that lengthened position. This is actually one of the things I found during my PhD in sports science, is that that lengthened position is really important for muscle growth. So any exercise we pick should be training the abs in spinal extension. Additionally, in the same vein, we want tension to be applied pretty forcefully in that lengthened position. Ideally, an exercise should be as challenging as possible in that stretch position that really grows your abs. Finally, we generally want to stick with dynamic muscle actions, which shortened and lengthened the abs, versus isometric actions, where the abs simply stay at one muscle length, don't change length or don't move, like for example during a plank. The plank would be a worse exercise 
on account of just being an isometric muscle action. So how do you best train the abs? The truth is you best train the abs, grow your abs, have them be visible, get a six pack, simply training them like any other muscle group. That means training the abs two to four times a week for your best growth, between five and 30 reps per set, maybe all the way up to 50 if you don't have much weight around, train them pretty close to failure. You should probably be doing 10 to 15 sets of direct ab work per week, maybe even more than 20 if you really want your best ab growth. Try picking exercises that lengthen the abs under load. I'm talking about exercises like the ab wheel rollout, the dragon flag, the candlestick, certain machine crunches, decline crunches. All of these exercises are great for lengthening the abs under load. Ab training absolutely makes your abs look better. You will have more of a six pack if you train your abs. However, unlike many other muscle groups, what most people care about with the abs is a visible six pack. So while ab training will absolutely help you have a better six pack and maybe you have a six pack when you're a little bit fatter, Losing some body fat is a surefire way to make your abs more visible and more visually impressive. To make ab training a little bit more time efficient and a little bit more engaging for some people, let's face it, not exactly the most exciting training you'll ever do, you could consider supersetting them with another exercise, like for example, supersetting some ab training with some bicep training. Because the muscle groups involved in these exercises are not the same, you can safely do one set of abs and then one set of biceps without really interfering with performance on either one and getting the same muscle growth as if you just did them separately and stared into the abyss for three minutes between sets. Finally, oblique work is a little bit more optional. If you want to train your obliques, consider doing some spinal lateral flexion exercises or lateral rotation exercises. For example, you could do some side bends. You could use a machine like a rotary machine. This is a bit more optional because the obliques both do contribute to spinal flexion just like the rest of dominus. So simply by doing exercises like I mentioned earlier, the abrial rollout, the dragon flag, etc., you'll still be training your obliques a decent amount as well. But if you really want to optimize the size of your obliques, consider some isolation exercise for those as well. That's the video. Let me give you a few takeaways. First, compounds are very suboptimal for the abs. If you really want to have a better six pack, isolate your abs. Train them just like any other muscle groups. During ab training, spinal flexion is key. Do not just move about at the hips, right? Move about at the spine. So go from being like a cat stretching, a very overextended spine, to like what you think you shouldn't do during a deadlift, right? Where you round your back a ton. If you can get from one position into the other, you're successfully training your abs. Do plenty of isolation exercises for your abs if you really want to grow your abs and have a more visually aesthetic six pack. Finally, if you want to reveal your abs, training will take you a long way, but if you can't see a thing, you will need to lose some body fat. So a deficit in terms of calories or energy and losing some weight is still the key. That's the video. If you like the video, please consider liking, subscribing, commenting, and I'll see you guys, my fellow six pack havers and joyers and lovers in that next one. Peace.